Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. And there's some good news in the air. I've heard a couple of my colleagues in the industry, Jackie down in Houston, and I believe my buddy Robert out in California. Some states are starting to open up. So they're strategically moving themselves towards that goal. Now here in Illinois, we're still in lockdown until at least June 1. There's rumors that it could go longer, but I've heard some orthopedic surgeons are back in business and you know some medical facilities are opening back up to a larger audience for elective surgery. So things are moving in that direction. So I hope that you've been preparing yourself both mentally, emotionally, as well as getting your business in order so that you're ready to take advantage of when your facility or your community starts to open back up. And of course, we have this sort of new norm, so it means a little bit, little different things to each of us in our respective businesses and our respective areas. So again, just use caution, follow the guidelines, and continue to serve your clients. So Jill and I, the two Anatomy Geeks, on last week's edition of Two Anatomy Geeks, we started a brand new series on the hip. And there's some controversial topics that we covered. It's, they're not really controversial. It's just controversial, or I should say, sort of contradicts a lot of what we all learn, including what I learned in chiropractic college and what I learned in rehab and what I learned in basically every single rehab workshop that I went to. Now, why is this, this information so important to you? Because your clients are coming to you with real concerns. They may have chronic tightness. They may have chronic discomfort. They struggle to perform at the levels they need to and or want to. They may have been through physical therapy. I'm working online with a woman who was in physical therapy two years. Two years she was in physical therapy and still had chronic shoulder problems. She had shoulder surgery on each shoulder. Was in PT doing all the wrong exercises, complete contrary to what she should have been doing. So she was in PT right before COVID. She stopped PT obviously because of COVID. Two online sessions. And I'm not saying this, please, please understand me. You guys know me. You know, I'm a pretty humble guy. I don't brag. I don't try to be arrogant. But two online sessions with me doing the right things. And she's already experiencing a difference in her range of motion as well as how she feels. So when I say, when I share this information with you, it's information that I use with my clients and patients here in my office in Chicago Integrated Movement Specials. It's what we teach to our highest level individuals that come through our year-long intensive, the, the Integrated Movement Special Certification. I know this information works, and yes, you will have clients it doesn't work with, but there's a lot of factors that, that come into play when you say, oh, this doesn't work, I tried this with my, with my clients, it doesn't work. One of the things we talked about in this past episode of Two Anatomy Geeks, so if you're curious, thank you so much for giving me that opportunity, and Jill, that opportunity to serve you and to help enlighten you and make actually anatomy fun. I should say, Jill makes it fun, I just make it uh, factual. <laughs> I bring the evidence, Jill brings the fun to learning anatomy, and people are loving this series, and there's still, there's still an opportunity if you want to sign up. It's really only, really only, yeah, that makes sense. It's only, I don't know what it is right now. Just go online, I'll put the link next to this video once this video is over. But, but one of the things we talked about was the glutes and psoas. So last week we talked covered the glutes and psoas, and why most of your clients don't have a tight, short psoas. Because what we all learned, myself included, and people are still teaching, my buddy uh, Brent and I were sort of going back and forth a little, little bit. We're going to have a debate, you know, an informal offline debate because, again, we agree probably with about 90, probably say 8% of the information we agree upon. We're going to have a little debate about this. But here's my thing. Your clients, we've, we've been taught that our clients sit in anterior pelvic tilt, hence the reason why they have short, tight hip flexors. But let me ask you, how do your clients sit? Do they actually sit in a position that would cause short, tight hip flexors? Because if that were true, they would be sitting in their chairs like this. If you told me your client sits like this and they have short, tight hip flexors, I'd say, yep, yep, they probably do because they're encouraging that position here. But no one sits like this, right? No one sits like this. And if you don't believe me, try sitting like this. It feels awful on your low back. It's pinching here in the hips. You would feel awful if you sat like that. So how do most people sit? They sit like this. They sit in posterior pelvic tilt. I turn this turn this way just so you can see it. They sit in posterior pelvic tilt and a lumbar spine flexion. So what muscles become short and tight in that position? Because again, remember your clients have sat like that from the time they sat in in their baby carriages to the time they sat in their high chairs to the time they sat in their desk chairs to the time they sat in college, high school and college to the time they got their jobs. So they've been sitting in posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar spine flexion. So tell me, how does that relate to what they do when they stand up? How do they go like that? The problem is, or I should say the answer is, they don't. They stay in posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar spine flexion. Now there's one other condition that causes them to stay in posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar spine flexion. 
And this is why this information is so important, why you have to understand functional anatomy, why you have to understand medical, medical conditions that impact your older clients. What happens to all older clients on some level, some more than others, some more advanced than others. They will all go through spinal stenosis. Will any of your clients with spinal stenosis walk around like this? Absolutely not. Most of us as young individuals, and <laughs> young, young, I'm 51, I'm like, I'm young. <laughs> so most of us will not walk around like this. We will walk around like this. If your clients have spinal stenosis, especially moderate to advanced spinal stenosis, they will never walk around in anterior pelvic tilt. Never. There's never, let me take that back. There's, you can't ever say never. Rarely will they walk around like that. So how do they walk around? They stand and walk around. They walk around like this, posterior pelvic tilt, lumbar spine flexion, and that's why your little old people, again, no offense to older people, they walk around shuffling like this with no butt and distended abdomens. So most of your clients that you're working with, most of your clients that are coming to you are not coming to you with anterior pelvic tilt. They're not coming to you with a short, tight, short, tight psoas. So if, you're, so if you think that your client does, make sure you've assessed for it. And if you assess for it and say, hey, they do have a short, tight psoas that's causing their low back pain, their hip pain, uh, whatever else is going on, then absolutely do your due diligence and release and activate whatever you need to do. But the problem is most of the protocols that are out there in the industry are actually feeding into these imbalances, meaning they're overstretching the hip flexors and they're tightening and shortening the glutes and hamstrings. Now, another assessment you can do, we talked about last time, is do a forward bend test. Put your client's feet together, knees locked out, have them bend forward and try to touch your toes. How many of your older clients can do that? Very few, and I'd say probably in the single percentages. And the ones that can, they were probably, they've probably done dance and or some kind of yoga or something most of their life to enable them to do that. So most of your clients have short, tight glutes and hamstrings and need to release there and need to actually shorten their hip flexors and create better balance between your hip flexors and hip extensors. So that's the kind of information we share. We share the functional anatomy, we share the biomechanics, we discuss what goes wrong, commonly goes wrong with your clients, and more importantly, we share with you the integrative movement system, the system we use, we created for our own clients and patients, the system that we use here with our patients here in our clinic, and we teach as part of our certification. We're sharing that process with you, and we're sharing that with you for one specific reason, because right now, your clients need a leader like never before. They need a resource, an educator source, something that can help educate them, inform them, and help them make informed decisions about their health care. You are that leader for your clients. So please take advantage of this information. If you want to, if you're looking for a fun way to learn anatomy, this week, like I said, we're, this module, this four-part series, we're covering the hip complex. So last week, gluten psoas. This week, we're going on to hamstrings and rectus femoris, or the hip flexors. We'll talk about why rectus femoris is, is over lengthened and not shortened in your clients and why your hamstrings often need to be released. I should say, be released. We make it fun, we make it practical because we want you to leave each session with practical information that you can apply right directly to your clients. We're giving you this information at a full price. I'll put the link, so if you're looking for more information, you can look at the link I'll put next to this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them next to this video as well. I will answer all questions, except for, What's wrong with my hamstring? What can I do for my hamstrings? I don't know you. I haven't done your medical history or I haven't taken an evaluation of you, so I can't answer specific questions, but I can give you general suggestions based upon my experience. So make it a great day. If you are indeed opening soon, be safe, be well, be that leader. We're gonna get through this stronger, more resilient, and the leaders that your current clients need, and you will attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. If we can do anything to serve you during this time, please let us know. Reach out to us. We're here to help you guys. Make it a great day. We'll see you Thursday with a preview for or a preview of next, this coming Saturday's edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. Thank you for all you do. Talk to you later. This is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Take care.